John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub. Coming at you live on February 24th, Leander, Texas, just outside of Austin, Texas. And uh, it is 6.23 in the morning. This is the morning show. Um, it kind of turned into a morning show. I've been uh, broadcasting, I guess, since last October and just been trying to figure out uh, what works best for me and how to go about doing all this in the best way that works for me and my schedule and just personally anyway. <clears throat> um, this is my journey to learn about the crypto space and I'm documenting it and I'm going along here and I have two formats of videos. I have this every morning news type of format where I just pick a few articles that interested me and just talk about them in the crypto market in general. And then I have specific project focused videos where I go into detail about specific product or projects. Um, and uh, they're generally longer format and I go uh, into detail trying to explain in my layman's terms um, about what a crypto project is and how it works and uh, basically my impression of it as kind of a layman jackass. So yeah, um, the last project I did was Synthetics and then before that I did Quant Network and then coming up here today, I'm about to upload my video for Hedera Hashgraph. So uh, be on the lookout for that one today. I'm doing the final, final touches on it. And really it's nothing special. It's just me sitting here talking about the project like I am now. Um, but it's just uh, the entire video is focused specifically on that project. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> let's get to the market. So what do we got here on the coin gecko? Mm -hmm. Got my morning um, and I guess not energy drink. It's not like a monster, but it's kind of the pre-workout type of thing you get from a, one of those vitamin stores. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if how good it is. I mean, I swear I'm going to go work out later. Um, anyway, um, got Bitcoin sitting at $50,753.99. So that's really good. Um, you know, everybody was freaking out. That's all you saw on crypto news yesterday was just about this crash and, you know, sky's falling. Oh my God. You know, this is my, this is my third crash now. This is my third crash to go through since I've been into crypto. And, uh, you know, I'm starting to get some veteran stripes here, aren't I? Um, I bought, I bought uh, a good little bag of Chainlink. Um, <clears throat> I bought uh, some Bitcoin. And uh, what else did I buy? Uh, that's about it. Um, so, yeah, some Bitcoin and some Chainlink. So, that's pretty good. Uh, Chainlink is still... You know, everything's still down, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, man, feeling like a champ, buying some crypto during the dip when everybody's screaming the sky is falling, and that's what you do. Uh, what is it? Ray Dalio said, when there's blood in the streets, you buy, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, anyway, or maybe it was Warren Buffett. I don't know. Maybe they both said it. I don't know. Um, anyway, we got Ethereum at 1697.40. Um, Ethereum, man, people have been posting these things about like the gas prices on Ethereum. I'll show you this here. Asset news. Ah, shoot, not this. Oh, this one. Okay, so um, I've been seeing several of these types of posts. Um, but if you look at this gas price here, 8 Ethereum, $14,700.20 for slow speed. Um, something's going on. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's... <laughs> I'm sure there's a, gonna be some kind of fix for this, um, but it tells me that the, the network is extremely clogged right now, well beyond the function of the network, and uh, something's gotta give and something's gotta be fixed. Um, maybe uh, I've been seeing hints that DeFi is going to explode again, so I don't know, who am I anyway? So, um, got Polkadot up here, Binance in third place at uh, $271.21. Everything's getting back into the green, and it's hard not to be in the green after what just happened. Who will be down point one? Okay, this is just in the past hour. So, uh, in the past 24 hours, just some stable coins down. So, everything is in the green now. Um, if you aren't in the green, then something's wrong. Um, or you run counter to the market. I mean, you never know. There are some stocks and some uh, cryptos that run counter to the market, and people buy those 
as hedges in their portfolio for when the market's down, they still retain the value in, uh, in another specific project or token. It's a strategy, <clears throat> apparently. I'm learning these things as I go along. Um, and then polka dots at 36.63, doing very well. Um, uh, I mean, Binance is up 108% in the past seven days. Polka dots up 21.2% in the past seven days. Uh, Cardano is up 21.3% in the past seven days. Um, so really, a lot of these are doing very well. Um, sucks my my darling, pretty darling Chainlink is down 11.3% in the past seven days. But Chainlink has a lot of amazing stuff coming. Uh, staking will be out soon, um, and I believe once staking comes out, <laughs> it's going to get unreal. Um, so yeah, and then let's see here. <clears throat> Got Uniswap up 31.4% in the past seven days. Um, we had crypto.com. Um, it's been interesting to see crypto.com. What's going on with crypto.com? They're up 170, 107.1.5% in the past seven days. And if you look at my Twitter, I did post an article about this. Oh, yeah, I bought a little bit of, of CRO when I saw this announcement. And uh, hopefully, you know, I, I would never normally buy CRO because I've just been kind of done with crypto.com. I just use them as an on ramp and that's it. But this is kind of interesting. And uh, you know, I have no hard feelings against crypto.com. A lot of people hate crypto.com and they call it trash. I have no big deal. I mean, it's, they've been doing nothing but uh, treating me right. And uh, yes, they've crashed a couple times, but they, so far as I can see, they've never been hacked. They've always done their job. Uh, they've been a good on-ramp. Um, I don't really use their staking staking platforms anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they've been a good good for what they what they need for what they're. Uh, what they're doing, uh, but this blog at crypto.com shows that they are trying to decentralize. And a couple days ago, they burned seven seventy billion tokens, and uh, the price just shot through the roof. And um, I bought a little bit of CRO right before uh, they did this, so I did really well with that. Um, it wasn't I didn't buy enough CRO to like really bank and make a ton of money, but you know. It, I got I got a, a fancy dinner for for two or maybe for the family out for the night, you know. So um, it works, you know. A little every little bit helps, you know. I'm just a working schlep and uh, I'm not investing. You know, uh, who was it? Matthew Deemer on uh, Decrypt Daily. I listened to him every day, and he was saying, you know, I want to hear the stories about the dude that you know has a half a Bitcoin and makes you know fifty thousand or a hundred thousand off of. Uh, cryptocurrency and then how does he reinvest it to retain that value um, well that's me you know and I'm trying to figure this out as I go along I'm not Shamath Palapataya I'm not uh, Elon Musk and you know I'm not these rich dudes with all this money you know the Pompliano dude trying to figure out how to hedge in my hundred million dollars you know I'm just a dude that goes to work every day and gets my salary and my paycheck and contributes a little bit in dollar cost average in order to be able to try to make some kind of wealth you know I'm I'm not I don't need a hundred million dollars man if I you know a hundred thousand dollars is amazing to me so far you know like if I were to make five hundred thousand or a million like dude come on man that's that works for me but I need to figure out how to retain that and how to uh, to uh, um, grow that as well and I'm learning as I go along I'm just kind of walking uh, with a candlelight in the dark taking advice from people uh, the right people because uh, the more money you make the more people will have something that they, they want to say to you and how to uh, to manage that so I'm uh, also trying to be careful about stuff like that so um, that being said, back to crypto.com, 70, 70 billion crow will be burned according to the following schedule. 59.6 billion will be burned today, 22nd of February, 2021. That was two days ago. 10.4 billion is currently locked in a smart contract and will be burned monthly as it gets unlocked. This will increase the circulating supply of crow from current 24% to over 84, 80%. The remaining 5.9 billion crow supply will be distributed as follows. 5 billion crow will be allocated to mainnet blocks for uh, chain validators and delegators, which helps secure the network, and 0.9 billion crow will be allocated to Particle B for chain ecosystem development. So basically, they're trying to decentralize. Um, you know, they, here's where they're burning, and um, that's it, 
100% circulating supply, 100% decentralized, 100% ready to rock the worlds of payments, DeFi, and NFTs. Um, yeah, so uh, who knows? You know, uh, Crypto.com could be on to something. Um, they paid a hefty amount to buy that Crypto.com, and uh, they have several cards that they've come out with. They definitely have a loyal fan base, and um, you know, I guess them buying that Crypto.com for that absorbent amount um, has uh, paid off for them so far. So more power to you. Um, yeah. And uh, all right, let's move on to the next set of news. Uh, Rachel Wolfson, I follow her on Twitter. Um, she s tends to put out some pretty good news and articles. Uh, U.S. Department, uh, Education Department promotes putting student records on blockchain. A new government-funded challenge seeks blockchain-based solutions to simplify educational data sharing, but implementation could take time. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed flaws across various sectors. As a result, a number of government departures are evaluating blockchain-based systems as possible solutions for challenges involving multi-party workflows, record-keeping, transparency, and more. Um, the, the United States Department of Education recently provided funding for the launch of Education Blockchain Initiative, referred to as the EBI. The project is led by the American Council on Education and is designed to identify ways that blockchain can improve data flow between academic institutions and potential employers. Um, if you have a college degree and you've applied for jobs and you've had to, uh, or you're trying to apply for one college and transfer to another college, um, if your employer or another school are asking for your transcripts or copies of your diploma or anything like that, you, you can understand how much of a pain in the ass it is to try to get all those transcripts together. Um, I've done this, I mean, I have a master's degree, but I, before that, you know, I worked my way up from community, from three different community colleges, then finally to my um, university, and then I finally graduated, and then I applied to, I guess, five different master's programs um, during that time, and each one of them I had to write in letters and go through their process and then pay their fees in order to get copies of my transcripts in order to be able to um, apply to all my different uh, graduate institutions and it was such a pain in the ass and then um, <clears throat> later on after I graduated you know I kind of you know found a mom and pop operation where I worked there for 11 years but then I moved on and went to another job and I had to once again dig out my diplomas and transcripts from 15 years before that and I had to go through the whole process again of, of paying the fine and writing and going on well, by that time they had the websites for each institution which was good but I had to go through that process and wait a few days and then have my transcripts mailed to me or emailed directly or mailed directly to my potential employer and that again was a pain in the ass so if you know about that process you know how welcome this uh, student record on the blockchain type of thing um, will be. Uh, so hopefully this streamlines that process <clears throat> um, and uh, makes all that type of stuff easier. So blockchain solves data transfer inefficiencies. The solution being built by Unblocked is an extremely important for a number of reasons. According to a study by the Government Accountability Office, students will on average lose the equivalent of one semester of coursework with each transfer. Um, stated that uh, shared that out of 23 million students in higher education, about 35% of them will transfer at least once and 11% will do it twice during their academic career. He also points out that community colleges are disproportionately functioning as a primary ent entry point for students from an historically underrepresented ethnic groups and low-income families. To put it mildly, transfer articulation is a structural inequality in higher education. Our hope is that the Unblocked project will reduce the extent of this inequality. Uh, another winning project came from Texas Women's University. The initiative aims to establish a consortium of institutions throughout the North Texas region via a shared credentialing platform. The platform would allow students to store and send their educational reg records to colleges and employers across North Texas. Um, Fleury also helped power a lifelong learner project which aims to develop a digital wallet for teachers to store and access their credentials, certifications, and learning resources. This aims to enable teachers to share these verifiable credentials with entities such as state licensing systems, human resources departments, and learning ma management systems. So this is really good, I think. Uh, you know, as somebody who did go to three different community colleges and, 
more and more people are starting to start at community college because the cost of college has extreme exploded through the roof since way back in um, the year 1997 when I started college or yeah, I, my first college was 94 not to date me but uh, <clears throat> yeah and uh, you know it's back then it was expensive but now it's completely mushroomed uh, in cost compared to then and then the system just has not kept up with the amount of transfers that people have to do now to navigate around that that college that cost so um, people can't just go four years now to uh, a higher institution because they can't afford it so people are, are spending a lot more time transferring back and forth to places where they can actually afford to go to school um, or they may have to take a break because they can't afford to finish the semester or whatnot and this causes issues with the transferring of records so anyway, now that's a that's good, good article. Anyway, uh, all right, Rachel Wolfson. All right, so um, next article, uh, North Korea ramping up its apple juice crypto hacks. I thought this was pretty uh, fascinating. Um, the whole thing is a prior state. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea has been largely cut off from the international community. Uh, therefore, they're doubling down on crypto crime to try to get some cash. Uh, so, um, they have a state-sponsored group uh, known as the Lazarus Group, also known as Hidden Cobra, uh, by the U.S. authorities. Who makes up these names? Hidden Cobra. Yeah, I think we're going to call that Hidden Cobra. Yeah, that sounds good, Brock. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, in 2020 report, crypto intelligence firm Recorded Future wrote that North Korean political and military elite is not simply not a simply a fascination or leisure activity, but a critical tool for revenue generation, gaining access to prohibited technologies and knowledge and operational coordination. Um, on February 17th, the FBI released an, award, an alert warning that the Lazarus Group was escalating its apple juice malware attacks on companies and individuals. The bureau said North Korea would be targeting cryptocurrency exchange and financial service companies in particular the method of attack would be by spreading crypto hacked crypto trading apps that have been modified to steal cryptocurrency um it says the work on windows and mac systems they appear to be they appear to be sent by a reputable crypto company and appear to be legitimate tracking victims tricking victims into downloading and installing them the fbi says the apps are circulating under the following names Celus, trade pro jmt trading union crypto qpay wallet uh, Coin Go Trade, Dorusio, and Ants to Whale. <clears throat> the FBI says crypto users can protect themselves against Apple Juice by verifying the source of cryptocurrency related applications, using multiple wallets for key storage, striking the appropriate risk balance between hot and cold storage, using custodial accounts with multi factor authentication mechanisms for both device and user verification, using cryptocurrency service businesses that have indemnity protections for stolen cryptocurrency, and having a unique dedicated device for cryptocurrency management. So yeah, some of the basic, just, you know, stay vigilant. Um, so uh, they, they, what fascinated me was, uh, let's see here, uh, don't enable macros. Um, if you get something, uh, a pop-up from a malicious document saying uh, it was protected under GDPR restrictions and it would have to enable macros in Microsoft Word to access the content. Once enabled, malicious code would execute. So watch out when something asks you to enable macros. Um, and that's uh, something I take for granted for some, a lot of times. Uh, I'm very guilty of that. Um, let's see, other common attacks are requests for assistance with creating a website with romantic undertones, like a porn site. <laughs> Documentation on a blockchain technology called Alchain, a request for assistance with creating an initial coin offering, a white paper for an ICO, a request application to develop a cryptocurrency exchange platform, and a request for helping uh, help creating an email marketing tool. The scammers are getting extra scammy, so uh, watch out. Um, <clears throat> And let's see what we have here. Uh, Lazarus, the North Koreans were behind that huge Q coin uh, cryptocurrency heist last, uh, uh, I think it was last fall, was it? Yeah, anyway, a buttload of people lost a buttload of money off Q coin exchange and uh, they lost around uh, $275 million worth of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum and other ERC20 tokens. I know 
Um, I was into Acropolis at the time, that DeFi instrument, and I know a lot of people that held Acropolis were um, definitely uh, affected by that. And the BZX token, the Fulcrum token, a lot of people were affected by that as well, along with the BZX hack. So, you know, yeah, I, I, it was just fascinating to me that uh, uh, the North Koreans were behind the Qcoin attack because for a while they couldn't pin who was behind it. So I just learned something. Um, an interesting element of the Qcoin hack was Lazarus's use of decentralized finance platforms to launder stolen funds. So what happened is after they stole the funds from the Qcoin um, exchange, they were able to launder all those through yield farming and through DeFi platforms like SushiSwap and all that stuff. And so it became, uh, there's um, a, the users and the, the uh, the governing uh, members of a lot of these DeFi platforms are anonymous and there's little to no KYC, which is know your customer or AML, which are anti monitoring money laundering provisions. Um, so that creates an easy scenario for cyber criminals to launder money. So, you know, I know all the authorities love to hate on cryptocurrency and call it a, a money laundering um, haven. Um, well, it kind of is, but um, so is uh, regular dollars with drug money. I mean, people launder that just as much, if not more, than cryptocurrency. So money laundering is around and it is there and it doesn't matter what medium the money is in. Money laundering is here to stay and it will always be around and it's been around since the beginning of history. So um, you, all you got to do is just try to work and create better technology to combat money laundering provisions without um, stomping all over people's uh, privacy. And then uh, a lot of the, the FBI and the IRS and the government really does not like Monero because Monero is completely anonymous and uh, it can't be tra tracked or traced. And uh, they've been spreading web-based Monero mining. Um, so, yeah, so... Uh, North Koreans really love their Monero, so and I can see why. So anyway, uh, they've been doing things. Uh, they uh, they have quite a long history of crypto hacking. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but one specific uh, method is called spear phishing. Just so you know what spear phishing is, I'll put a link in the um, video description. It's just uh, spear phishing is an email or electronic communication scams targeted toward a specific individual, organization, or business. Um, so it's not just a general dragnet phishing operation. Um, although often intended to steal data or malicious purpose, for malicious purposes, cyber criminals may also intend to install malware, malware on a targeted user's computer. And um, I get spear phishing attempts quite often in Telegram groups. Watch out if somebody tries to offer you tech support. Um, they'll either try to ask you to download some um, type of software to run on your computer, or they'll ask you for your private keys straight up, or they'll ask you to go to a specific website and enter your information and all that stuff. So uh, watch out for that and watch out on Telegram groups specifically because Telegram groups run rampant. If somebody DMs you, um, don't answer back uh, unless you specifically know exactly who they are. <clears throat> all right. Um, anyway, uh, last final bit of news. Um, I thought this was pretty uh, fascinating. I, uh, if you've listened to my broadcast, you know that I kind of have a bad taste in my mouth for Binance, and I don't necessarily like Binance, and I could never really put my finger on it, and it's just, I don't know. I just, yeah, I, just, I, I, I like Ethereum, man, yeah, okay. Um, but, uh, um, it's funny. I know this is open source. Now I know it's open game. Um, Binance, but Binance literally copy pasted Ethereum and Uniswap source code. What a failure! Apparently, uh, this is the opinion by this person on Reddit. Uh, so they said twenty six code results in Pancake Swap per Pancake Swap interface. Uh, Binance's exchange name and then here they they find all the instances where the person who is copy and pasted. Um, you can find all this code in open source code in GitHub, by the way, if you don't understand this type of stuff. GitHub is a repository for code where people who create programs and algorithms and stuff like that and uh, can keep their code on GitHub 
and then um, people, the public, can go in and see what they've done. It's a great way as a developer to showcase your work and kind of build a resume. Um, but projects will put their code onto GitHub and um, it, to be completely transparent. So what Binance did, they put their source code for PancakeSwap onto uh, GitHub. And here you can see they still haven't even bothered to change the names of some of these URLs in here at Uniswap and then at Uniswap default token list at Uniswap at Uniswap version 2 core. Uh, Uniswap, Uniswap, they didn't even bother removing Uniswap from here in the, in the description. And then when you see little forward slashes like this in code, that is something that the machine doesn't read and that is for the human being to be able to read and see what is going on there with the code. Um, so uh, this is for human references and they didn't even bother changing that part of uh, the entire program. So uh, <laughs> it's just pretty interesting. Uh, it just seems lazy and uh, I don't know. Uh, you go down here and then they, there's like an entire... Uh, ethical debate so they're pu pulling in a lot of code they don't control um, it'd be a shame if you if uniswap migrated from at uniswap default token list to at uniswap default token list 2 and the old dependency uniswap default token list would just alert penis all the time so <laughs> that basically means that uh, the uh, reference that they're referencing um uh, if Uniswap were to go in and change that reference and change their code because PancakeSwap is using their reference and if it just popped up on the screen penis instead. So uh, that would be competition as its finest. That would definitely be a troll operation and it would be funny. And then people say, not a big finance, but this is open source and it's kind of normal behavior. They didn't write their open source code from scratch, so uh, who does that anyway? And that's true. Uh, there will be hundreds of copies of Uniswap cake swap, monkey swap, swap swap, swamp swap in the future, exactly. Um, you know, people say sushi swap was um, just pretty much cut and paste of uh, Uniswap. People say Tron is uh, just a cut and paste as well of Ethereum. So, yeah, it is what it is, um, you know, not to marginalize one specific culture or group of people, but the Chinese are known for copying. Um, this is not an open source issue. Binance is a mainland Chinese company. Anyone who, who follows anything to do with tech in China knows there are gazillions of instances in mainland Chinese companies copying someone else's code. <laughs> code. Heck, it's not just code. They copy everything. It's what they do. And uh, I have to agree, uh, agreed they no longer registered as a Chinese company, but copying shite is embedded in the Chinese culture. So this context is okay to call them a Chinese company, I guess. Um, but um, I go to trade shows for uh, my manufacturing company. And uh, honestly, it's just, they're, they're, they're right. You know, I see, and I get inquiries from Chinese companies wanting me to send them a sample of our product and then they're there at the trade shows taking tons of photos of our product or our competitors' products, etc., of anything built by an American company or a European company because they want to duplicate it. And, uh, and they're very good at reverse engineering stuff. So watch out. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't criticize that uh, uh, you say it's open source. What I criticize is the comparisons and banters as if we're talking the same when looking into... Binance Smart Chain versus Ethereum. So yes, they deserve a penis because yes, it's open source. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, and then it goes on and on and on. I'll put the link for this Reddit feed. Um, yeah, can this cannot this cannot be news to anyone? Same with Tron and a lot of other shite coins. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, that just uh, thought it'd be interesting for those of you who are not. Um, uh, aware of the entire development world and uh, I'm definitely not an authority on that either but uh, um, just know that this stuff goes on and whenever you see a brand new DeFi application or a brand new blockchain or brand new anything um, ask a dev um, they can look at the code and see uh, little clues like this or you know, blatant clues like this and uh, know if it's just been copied and pasted from some other type of uh, application and just been given a couple bells and whistles and rebranded as something revolutionary so 
a lot of people into DeFi claim that there actually is no really new tech going on right now, that everything is just slightly altered from previous. However, isn't anything new that is developed always on built on the shoulders of giants? I mean, I, I can't say that I've gotten anywhere in life where I've gotten without help from or imitation from or uh, some kind of inspiration from some kind of uh, better, larger person or entity or idea than me. So it just depends on which angle you want to take on this philosophical argument, I suppose. Um, all right. Well, that being said, I've gone on 30 minutes and that's about as long as I want to keep these morning shows. Um, yeah, you guys... Um, Enjoy your day. I will be uploading this Hedera Hashgraph video um, and uh, you know, going on with my day here as well at work. And um, you guys, uh, be nice to each other. Um, don't be trolls. Um, be nice to your convenience store clerk. Be nice to your family and be nice to your kids. Um, take a breath before you say anything uh, out of reaction. And. Uh, yeah, um, don't jump down people's throats. Uh, you never know what somebody else is going through. All right, well, enough advice. Uh, I will talk to you later. <laughs>